Between the emotional roller coaster that's the final season of Succession, the weekly zingers from Abbott Elementary, and the hot new diet tips we're learning from Yellow Jackets, TV is really good right now. Like monumentally good. Like cancel every plan good. Like disgustingly good. The disgusting brothers. No. And it's in danger of disappearing forever. Okay, maybe that's a bit dramatic. But spoiler alert, we're at a crisis point in the world of entertainment. So strap in, pencils down, and get ready for everything you need to know about WGA, the AMPT, and the writer strike. By the way, it's worth mentioning that YouTube scriptwriters don't belong to any guild. They probably should, but that's a topic for another video. In any case, this video isn't crossing the picket line, so please like and subscribe. Let's introduce some key players and phrases before we begin. In one corner, we have the WGA. The WGA is the Writers Guild of America. Over 11,000 TV, movie, and fiction podcast writers belong to it. In the other corner is the AMPTP. AMPTP stands for the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. This group represents eight major networks, studios, and streamers. The AMPTP and the WGA meet every three years to negotiate contracts. Basically, the WGA asks all its members to vote on what they want most, the negotiating committee brings those demands to the studios, and usually they reach an agreement and renew the contract. Think of it like the fancy Hollywood version of begging your mom to let your cousins stay over for a sleepover. Except this year, the WGA asked for a sleepover and the AMPTP said, hmm, what if instead of a sleepover, we made you spend the entire summer in that prison camp from the movie Holes? I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! You keep digging! Again, we're exaggerating a bit, but what can I say? The script is written by a writer about a writer's strike. It's like that part in Piano Man where Billy Joel talks about how hype the bar was when he played Billy Joel songs. We have a vested interest. Anyway, what actually did happen was the WGA came in with some of the following demands. Increased minimum weekly pay across the board for writers. A staffing minimum increase to combat the prevalence of many rooms, which are extremely small writer rooms that are asked to turn over lots of work in a short amount of time. This is common in streaming content. Regulation on artificial intelligence. Basically, they want to make sure that AI isn't being used to write scripts. And increased residuals, meaning money you get back when the material you've written is re-aired. The AMPTP agreed to some things, like giving some extra money to staff writers and a slight increase to pension and health funds. But they couldn't see eye to eye on the other, arguably more important stuff. To sum it up, the WGA asked for changes that would cost about 420 million dollars per year, and the AMPTP countered with an offer of only $86 million per year. We know that once we start talking millions, it's hard to grasp if you, like us frankly, are out in these streets struggling to afford guac at Chipotle. But trust us, this is really important. The WGA said it best. Their March 14th bulletin, entitled, Writers Are Not Keeping Up, begins with a sentence, while company profits have remained high and spending on content has grown, writers have fallen behind. This bulletin goes on to detail how the advent of streaming services leads to a lot of negative adjustments for writers, including an adjusted for inflation, median weekly pay drop of 23%, less time allowed in the writer's room, and fewer options for writers to be on set to make changes during production. Here's veteran TV writer Melinda Sue Taylor summing it all up on the picket line. In the writer's room, we are being squeezed smaller and smaller and asked to work longer and longer periods for less and less money less and less opportunity, less and less training on the job so that we could eventually move up the ranks and have more creative ownership. The studios are pressuring the system in a way that makes us gig workers, essentially, like job to job to job. Right now, if I join a mini room, my salary, my weekly pay is the same as somebody who joined the guild last week. I've been at this for 20 years, and it seems reasonable to me that my work should be valued differently after 20 years on the job. Even if the current writer's salaries seem like they'd be enough to make a huge impact on one's guacamole buying power, take a second and factor in the cost of managers, agents, and lawyers, in addition to rent and daily spending in some of the most expensive cities in the world. Because of the nature of TV and movie making, that salary should ideally also cover a writer for the time between seasons of their show or any other float time between the end of one project and the beginning of another. It should cover that, but currently, it doesn't. 
Factors like this are why we're seeing tons of real stories about TV writers from hit shows having to rely on food stamps or second and third jobs between gigs. And all that becomes doubly insulting when you learn that the CEOs of the studios made over $773 million last year. So all of that and other stuff we can't neatly fit into this video led to the WGA strike which started May 1st. This means instead of writing, they, along with the occasional band your high school boyfriend loved, are picketing every day in front of the major studios. Picketing is an effective method of stopping production because other unions that involve folks like the Teamsters, who do a lot of on-set manual labor, refuse to cross the line. So what does this mean for you, the TV fan? For one thing, you're probably missing your favorite late night shows. Everything from Late Night with Seth Meyers to Saturday Night Live has gone dark to support their writers who are on strike. Without these people, Without these people, this show would be called The Late Show with a guy rambling about the Lord of the Rings and boats for an hour. And that especially hurts when you realize that Jennifer Coolidge and Kieran Culkin were supposed to host SNL. Secondly, if this strike lasts a long time, it means that some of your favorite shows, like Abbott Elementary, might have shorter seasons because they won't be released when they're supposed to be. This means they might have to rush to cover plot lines that were meant to have longer arcs, something that famously happened to many series the last time there was a writer's strike in 2007. Fun sidebar, that strike also allegedly stopped the Breaking Bad writers from killing off Jesse in season one. See, collective action works. This strike will likely lead to blocks of unscripted TV like The Bachelor, Dancing with the Stars, and pretty much everything Steve Harvey touches. And heck, some of these kinds of shows won't air because they employ WGA members called story producers. These shows aren't bad. They're just not, well, they're not. She's brought a ludicrously capacious bag. Are you telling me it only shows up once a month? And it never skips a month? Only if you're pregnant. Oh, well, shoot. I gotta check out this wine delivery service. You're like secretly Mormon? No. Oh, you should be because you need more men. Plus, last time there was a writer's strike, these unscripted blocks equaled more airtime for this guy. <laughs> which a lot of people think helped improve his public perception, and well, we all know how that one ended up. If shows have already been fully written or fully produced, they'll likely still air, but their creators won't be able to promote them because that would violate the picket line. Plus, the SAG and AFTRA, which stands for the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, might also strike in June. The DGA, Directors Guild of America, is also in the middle of contract negotiations. If all of these guilds strike at the same time, it will be the most epic reenactment of Newsies we've seen in decades. And it will also mean that much of the entertainment industry and all of the other businesses that rely on it will take a major hit. If all that isn't enough to get you to care about this strike, consider this. If writers don't get paid a living wage, that means the only people who can be writers are people who can afford to make less. And you can't get mad about Nepo babies in the industry and also make it hard for anyone whose dad isn't Eugene Levy to survive it. Paying writers fairly allows more folks from from different social classes and historically marginalized people to have a seat at the table. Diversity of writers means diversity of stories being told. Plus, we've already seen over and over again that outsourcing creative work to AI just isn't going to cut it. Labor issues like this affect all of us who aren't in the 1% because we all deserve to be paid fairly. Supporting unions helps everyone from teachers to TV writers to the nights at Medieval Times and let's face it, we need all of those folks to make our lives better. Here's to working together for a future where we all can say yes to Chipotle guac. So what do you think? Tell us what you think about the WGA strike in the comments below and let us know what TV or movie topic you'd like us to cover next.